Uh, so the reason I joined the Air Force, um, I was living in a small town in New Mexico, working as a firefighter, and my wife started having some health problems. We couldn't get health care for her in the town we were at, and so the Air Force was the best way for me to get that health care for my wife. Kind of a boring answer, but everyone's got their own reasons for joining the Air Force, and that was the big reason why I joined. Uh, I've been in the Air Force about five and a half years, and I'm currently a staff sergeant. So my career field is called services. Uh, we cover the areas of food service, fitness, lodging, and mortuary affairs. The AFSC is 3F1X1. That changed a couple years ago, so some people still refer to it as 3MOX1, but it's not that anymore. It's 3F1X1. Uh, so I came in open general and found out my job at basic training. You know, I got to, I got, I picked 10 jobs and I think I put services as number five. So this job wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do, but I had an experience at basic training. At church one Sunday, I met a traveling services instructor who was TDY to Lackland, oddly enough, to teach a food service shift leader course. And I talked to him a little bit and he basically convinced me that this career field wasn't that bad. Any career field will be bad if you have a bad attitude about it. So as long as you maintain that positivity that you can enjoy any job. And I've tried to keep that in mind throughout my time. Uh, so when I originally went to MAPS, they told me I didn't qualify to be a firefighter, which is what I really wanted to do more than anything. That was because of my vision. So number two, I really wanted to do aerospace medical service or something similar to that. When I filled out my job list, I basically just went off of how the stuff sounded of, you know, the descriptions they gave me. So I ended up only signing a four-year contract originally because when I went to MAPS and I asked the, I think they call them a MAPS liaison for the Air Force, you know, where they have you sign the, the paper and fill out the career fields you want for your contract. I basically asked her to give me the sales pitch of why I should sign a six-year, you know, wanted to know what extra benefits I could get, but I already had quite a few college credits coming in, so I was already coming in as an A1C. Uh, so she looked me right in the eye and said, there is no reason in this world why you should sign a six-year contract. So my tech school was at Fort Lee, Virginia. It was on an army base, but actually all four branches I trained their cooks there. So we actually shared dorms with the Navy, and we also saw quite a few Marines while we were there. So the services tech school was six weeks. Mine was 31 classroom days, and I think the next class after me, it got shortened to 28 classroom days. So for me, I didn't enjoy tech school a whole lot. I joined a little bit older. I was 26 and it felt like I was hanging around with a bunch of children. And then because it was on an army base, a lot of our rules and restrictions for what the airmen could do were in line with the rules and restrictions placed upon the army soldiers that were in training at the same time and it seemed like a lot of the soldiers couldn't get their act together so they were put under a lot of restrictions and the airmen in turn were put under a lot of those same restrictions even though we were doing pretty good but just as an idea we weren't allowed to drive we had to still had to have a wingman with us everywhere we went and from talking to other people from my BMT flight in tech school at the same time as me, none of them that I talked to had to have a wingman to go anywhere, and they were all allowed to drive if they had a car. We just had a lot of restrictions, and then that, in combination with me being in my later 20s, just felt like I was being treated like a child, and that wasn't really not something I enjoyed. 
So bases we can get stationed at in services. All your overseas bases are on the table for us. Uh, there's a few stateside bases that the career field has been nearly completely contracted out. Most of those are AETC bases, so a few that I know of. Hill Air Force Base basically can't get stationed there until you're at least a master sergeant. Lackland Air Force Base has, I've heard, two services personnel on the entire base. Randolph, I've heard, doesn't have any at all. That's really the big ones I've heard of is those few. But most bases we can go to, there's a few that we can't, and they're um, mostly AETC bases. Someone who comes in services, they're usually going to go to food first, and they'll generally be there 18 to 24 months before they get moved to a different core area and so you're working either early mornings late evenings or graveyard shifts the dining facility i'm assigned to currently our shifts are 0 4 30 to 13 30 10 30 to 19 30 or 19 30 to 0 4 30 and then after 18 to 24 months, sometimes longer, in that one core area, then you'll get transferred to a different area where usually fitness center or lodging, both of which will also have similar inconvenient hours to work. Each shift has its benefits and drawbacks, but there's no typical eight to five hours until you get a little bit higher in rank and you get in charge of overseeing a lot of things beyond just a single shift. My, my big advice to anyone coming in is going to be a services airman is have a positive attitude. There's a lot of negativity in this career field. Not a lot of people choose this career field coming in. A lot of people either come in open general or they'll get reclassed. You know, they'll go to one tech school and they'll get reassigned for a variety of reasons. It could be academic reasons. I've known quite a few people who were either security forces or special forces who got injured during their tech school and got reassigned to services. So there's, you're gonna be surrounded by a lot of people who don't necessarily wanna be here and working this career field. Maintain a positive attitude, make the best of your situation. I know some recruiters will try to sell this career field as, oh, you can just be at the fitness center and you'll basically be, just be a personal trainer. That is not true. There is a sp special duty position within the career field where you can be assigned to run PT at officer training school. I think that's a four year assignment and you're not gonna get to do that your whole career. If your recruiter tells you you're basically just gonna be a personal trainer, that is that is not correct. I know another person who was told that they could just be a banquet chef at the Pentagon for their whole time in, that is also not correct. Uh, you have to be in a little bit for a little bit and apply for those positions. You can't just request those fresh out of tech school. School. But come in with a positive attitude. Know that you're going to be working in more than one area of the career field in your time in the Air Force. And know that you're going to start at the bottom and be prepared to learn every day in your career.